What you see in this film is an introduction to group coaching, which can be done in many different ways, but here it's what's called a company-specific program. It's about the top executive team who uh, could function somewhat better. There are many undiscussable, snakes on the carpet, things people don't talk about. The challenge for the, the group coach to get those things on the table so decision-making process in the future will become better. It's very important to make clear that leadership coaching, the effect is that it's a higher probability for change. Having a coach present makes a difference to help create a tipping point. Because of the many people involved, and particularly in a company-specific program, one company, they will push the person in a certain direction he has promised to go. I use a concept of psychodynamic psychotherapy, particularly object relation theory. I also have a, have a very systemic approach to things. People are not in isolation and in the context. Concepts from paradoxical intervention and also group contagion. All those factors play a role in the process. Typically, uh, the group consists of four to six people. Each of them will have around two hours in the sun. The place has to be quite comfortable, so I can create for them what sometimes is called a transitional space, where they can play a little bit and think about other things than a normal work. The day before the coaching day is when the work really begins. They're all together now. I start off with something neutral, talk about high performance organizations, leadership style, effective and ineffective leadership, and then I talk about the feedback instruments. I give them a brown envelope and say, tell them, you know, say thank you, don't say I'm going to kill the bastards, quote unquote, who have Thank them for all the feedback they have given you. And I want them to sleep on it. That's very important to me. I don't want to immediately start after I give them the feedback. They have to think a little bit about it. Otherwise, they become too defensive. So the next morning, I begin. My expectation would be that at the end, we're really working as a team, as a global team, which understands everything that's going on uh, and is, is fully committed to sharing that responsibility for other people in the... Uh, in the company and sorry sorry um, and yeah and if they take that on board then I think that'll be a huge step forward for this company um, the people have got too many personal agendas they're driving their own careers perhaps rather more looking at the bigger picture and understanding that so commitment um, accountability for your actions I think working in a more boundaryless environment where everybody's singing from the same hymn sheet. I feel uh, trapped. I feel like an animal in a cage. I feel someone's got me here to tell me something that they could have easily told me down in the office, back, back, um, back in the office. I got the report. I feel, I feel apprehensive. I feel quite positive about it, and I think it's high time that this, this company, if we are going to move into the future, um, that we take on basically the human element. Um, and I think it's high time that these, certainly these four people spoke to one another. I don't really think that I am like I was portrayed by other people. I don't think they really appreciate how much, uh, how much work I put in. Uh, they see it as interfering, which um, was a bit of a surprise to me. So, I'm not looking forward to it at all. So, how do you all feel being here? A little bit confused? Mm -hmm. And you know why we're here. Every team, even this great functioning team, might sometimes have some undiscussable, some snakes on the carpet. So, maybe when we go through this process, eventually it is more easier for all of you to have what I sometimes call courageous conversations. One of my challenges is going to make to here a rather playful place, a transitional space. You know, building trust. Now to get you a little bit into the playful mood, into this transitional space, and don't look so gloomy about it, Tanya, I found a very useful tool is to do yourself portrait. I want you to draw, be artistic, and associate when you draw to a few things, like your head, your heart, your stomach, oh. your stomach, yes, the stomach too, <laughs> leisure, work, the future, and the past. No words, just free associations. So don't sit there in a catatonic state. Get up and start drawing. I do hope that, uh, that I can put forward a point of view that people might understand. I think they've got me wrong. They all think I'm the policeman, that I'm telling them what to do. I'm just trying to keep them in line. I mean, you know, we're trying to keep a flute here. So maybe they'll understand. Maybe.
Well, my expectations for this session are relatively low because I don't think I've been an enthusiastic participant in this whole process. I'm here under orders, I'm extremely busy, um, and I think I could be better occupied back in my office. I'm one of two twins, and it started out actually with me and my brother, and then I realised that somewhere along the line I've, I've left my brother behind, and my partner, my wife, has replaced him in, in my affection. So this is the past, and so I left sort of one of us behind, and so she's the future for me. Um, this, I mean, it's really corny, I'm sorry. <laughs> this is um, the way I feel about her and my family. This, <laughs> surprisingly enough, is my work, because that's, it's based in her stomach as though, it was, if, as though it was a baby. And as UNESCO would say, woman is the future of mankind. And I see, I see what we're doing, what we're doing actually here and now, and will be doing in the future. The green energy will save the planet. So this is, this is our future. And I feel as protective about this as I would of a baby in her womb. Now is the ideal time for us to move forward, especially as the new focus is gonna be on innovation and green energy. I think it's very important that we take the time out from business to share a vision and then move forward. I first want to share some of the data of the jelly. You know, there's an element, quite a discrepancy between the way you see yourself and how others see yourself. Mm. What stuck out for me was the incredible high scores you get in vision, which is, I think, extremely rarely seen, that you really have, you know, really a very good perspective on future developments and things like that. It's very clear. This is as high as it comes. What also strikes me, you are very high on stress, which is uh, a little bit worrisome, which I think is related to some of the also health concerns you have. Of course, you got also the personal feedback comments from, uh, from friends and family members. He's the most creative person I've ever known. Nice. Other person showing enthusiasm, creating a sense of the bigger picture, being friendly, approachable, great use of humor. Other person smart, gets the essence, gets to the essence of an issue. Other person is the most stimulating boss I have ever worked for. I mean, those are nice, nice comments. Mm. Uh, develop, some people shove it into develop, you know. He needs to be better organized and more attentive to the needs of his direct reports and the broader SM team. He invests way too little time. When he's focused on the people issue, he's fine, but he is too rarely focused. Is that you? Anyhow, that being said, um, can you say a few things about yourself? To get a full person, we discovered it's much more useful when you get a little bit of a picture of who you are. Yes, yes. What are your parents like? What is your mother like, your father like? What were you like as a little boy? Um, I'm one of, two, uh, of twins. Uh -huh. um, when we were born, um, I think it gave us a bit of a shock. My parents had a very active social life, so quite often... And all the comments home. made, you seem to be extremely creative. Uh, did it just erupt out of nowhere, or there is a history behind that? My grandfather invented vacuum packed, and the process basically has been embraced by everyone ever since. When you look at your experience in organizational life, do you have any comments about that? Yeah, I'm continually frustrated by people trying to pen me in. If you uh, look in a crystal ball, you know, three years forward. I would like to have realized certain goals. You're still in the organization. Well, that depends whether or not I get to realize those goals. <laughs> <laughs> if understanding happens, and if these goals are realizable, then yes, I can still see myself here. Otherwise, I can see myself in the Pacific coast of Mexico. It freaks me out that people try and pen me in, and then I won't be able to be as creative as, as my job actually deserves. Um, and that I'm going to have to defend my own territory, but at the same time, I have, to, I have to understand their point of view, but they have to understand mine too. So there's going to be a lot of pushing and pulling in this, and I'm apprehensive about that because things get my, they might get dirty. I'm going to ask you something which might be difficult for you, which is to, as you know in the previous sessions, to be silent and just listen very carefully what other people have to say. What animal comes to your mind when you think of Joe? What, him? Yeah. Well, I went home early the other night and my son was watching a film called Ice Age, which is a cartoon film, and it's set in the Ice Age. 
And at the beginning, it has a crazy squirrel, a frantic squirrel that dashes around chasing an acorn. And it catches, gets, sometimes gets the acorn, the acorn always escapes. And it seems to me that this is the situation he's in. He's not that focused enough. He's, exactly. You have to get your eye on the ball. That's what I would say. Tame that squirrel boy. <laughs> <laughs> Tanya, if you would work for Joe, what would it be like? I wouldn't like to work for him, no. I would feel very frustrated. Why this nice person, you would not like to work for him? So you never answer your phone. I mean, this is the most creative person I've seen in a long time, according to the ratings. What does he do that he frustrates you? Well, he's never there. You he's have a meeting? always late for every meeting. I mean, not every but meeting. But he's important. Everybody's important. Ah. But he's more important because he's the visionary part. Then you're right, yes, the creativity. Maybe yes, yes, maybe, maybe yes, yes. I would, I would enjoy to have someone in my team like Joe, with his qualities, yeah. Let me go to Bruce, as a friend. I think as a friend, Joe, I would say that, you know, I can't overemphasize just how valuable your creative contribution is to this company. That's why, you know, I brought you in and, and why you're here. But to leverage that to its greatest capacity, you need to have other people working with you. And that's to do with respect. And I know it's not what you intend, but the way people receive your being late for meetings, sometimes not even coming to the meetings at all, not answering emails, not answering phone calls, people perceive that as a lack of respect. And as a result of that, we can't take advantage of your wonderful ideas and creativity. All right. After, after having been uh, compared to different animals and other comments being made, how do you feel? Well, it's strange because you're actually, um, you hold up a mirror, finally, and you see th three different versions of yourself. And, and I suddenly understand people's frustrations and I suddenly understand that, yeah, it is something that I have to take on board. What are the two things you would work on? Making it more transparent that I do respect people and I realise that I'm only part of an organisation, I realise. How would you do that? Probably by simplifying the way that I communicate, because I, I know that I can go off on tangents. Do you expect from the people here, for example, when you go off on a tangent, that they can say, Joe, enough, there you go again, yeah. or is that, that you want that from them? I officially give you all license to just say, stop, Joe. You upset that uh, you know, Tanya didn't, uh, was very ambivalent about working for you? No, because at the same time, you know, I mean, we can't change like that. Oh, come on, Joe. You wouldn't work with me either. <laughs> that question has not been asked by Manfred. <laughs> <laughs> We've at least got to the point now where we recognise the difficulties that we have with one another and you, we are in the process of perhaps making fault into a feature. Thank you for your openness, your uh, frankness and telling a lot of things nobody probably has ever heard about you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Bruce, you know the routine now. You're the last one. I deliberately left you for last. Could you start with your self-portrait? Sure. So, I tried to organize this uh, quite well. I'll start with the, uh, the past. Gradually, the road twists and turns through life and goes, perhaps becomes slightly narrower as you go chortling along in this big car as you become more successful with dreams of, of more money and uh, organizing and running a, a big company, above all being the best. From the past you have this fallen girl, what does it stand for? It's actually my, uh, my daughter Jessica, who um, died, died in a car accident when she was, uh, when she was four. Sorry. You want to wait a moment? It's okay. Um, you know, you can wallow in that sadness and that can really destroy an entire family. So it's best perhaps just to protect yourself against that and 
mourn for your child, and that's good and well, and then leave that parked to the side and move on down, down the road, perhaps. My, my doubts have got to be, you know, as I, as I was saying before, the, the methodology. You know, I mean, it's not an exact science, I understand that uh, uh, psychology, and uh, there's room for error, maneuver, and, and interpretation, and uh, I mean, I was looking at the results last night, you know, uh, from, from the feedback forms, and uh, I didn't recognize myself in that at all. People wrote a lot, they did a lot of writing, they made the effort to write a lot of comments, and they talk about, you know, the, that you really come across as a very charismatic leader, when you talk, people listen and it can also be very charming, you inspire people, which I think are very nice comments. Uh, what you should develop, they say, uh, mix around, show yourself more. You know, very often the CEOs become like the invisible man. What really uh, comes also through is an element of <clears throat> that you could empower people more, that you could delegate a little bit more. There's an element of micromanagement. Comments are being made here, which is a habit of this modern age of multitasking. That mm. you talk to people, you look at your Blackberry, you look at the computer screen, and those kind of things, and that people feel that you know, they, they're really not taken into consideration. And actually in psychotherapy, person pays attention, the person listens carefully, and I think that's something anybody can develop. So those things are important. And with that being said, maybe you can uh, say something about yourself. Um, say something about myself. Well, uh, uh, what kind of regrets would you have? I think I never got to know my father. Consider one quality of character you have and you can do without. What would that be? Hmm. Who would spend a day with a person dead to alive? Who would you pick? Am I allowed to say my father again? If you look at your life, what do you see as the dumbest thing you've ever done? The dumbest thing I've ever done. What gets you angry? People not doing what they said they would do. What? Last question, and the crystal ball question. When you look three years hence, what do you see? Maybe it's then time to start giving something back to the community. Um, through, through, through my daughter Jessica, I'm very involved in looking at uh, bereaved families and there's a lot of charity work I could develop more there. And, um, you don't want to be the richest person in the graveyard. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think that's, uh, I don't think that's my ambition. No. All right. Joe, you want to start with the animal farm? Yeah. Uh, I, I think Bruce is a beaver. A beaver. Why? Well, he's very ostentatiously um, busy. He's very sort of industrious. And he builds dams and it's, it's all, you know, offered and it's... But the, the river still flows through. It seems somewhat pointless. And when, when you... Well, not, not pointless, but when, when you sort of actually remind him of what's happening... Um, he, he, he says he's all over the place. Yeah, he's all over the place. And he, you know, he sort of makes an enormous amount of noise and then never forgets, actually. Tanya, what animal did you pick for Bruce? Well, I thought of Bruce as a giraffe. Physically, he's tall. Um, he's quite aloof. I think a lot of people in the office would like to see him more around than his head always up in the trees. But very stately, elegant. Um, I think a giraffe suits you. As a friend, what advice would you give him? Turn your Blackberry off from time to time. You know, people talk, people say, he's always on the phone, he's not got time, he won't come and see us. I think that, that is important. Um, when we have a problem, we can come to you. It's your accessibility. Um, and don't, you know, micromanage too much. What about you? Well, I see Bruce as a, a sort of one of these big jellyfish. Uh, a box jellyfish? You know, yeah, box jellyfish. Deadly? They're, yeah, they have those big trailing tentacles. He's drifting and he goes with the tide 
And he has these long tentacles that can damage you if you get too close. I guess the other reason for that is that <clears throat> you're always wondering where he is. Every time you go in the water, you're thinking, are there any jellyfish around? Once you see one, and this, uh, CEOs always are a bit like that. When am I going to bump into him? And, uh, or how can I avoid him? Thank you. Thank you, um, all of you. Uh, I think that's the first time we've had a conversation at this, uh, this kind of level, and I think it's probably a good thing. I think it's a very good thing. And remember again, shame, guilt, and hope. What do you feel you should really focus on? I, I can quite see how empowering people to not micromanage them and have more authority to make your own decisions would certainly reduce my stress. So that would be two birds with one stone. And so what would you ask them to do? To push you back when you go on automatic pilot? Just, just tell me, like you have now. I mean, I wish, I wish in some ways you'd done this over the last five years. We all give everybody an, already an applause. We should also give an applause to the... <laughs> don't you think so? Remember at the beginning of the day I asked you how well you felt you functioned as a team. Right? But during discussion, mega issues came up, general issues, which is not just alone for you, but for the whole team as such. And I wonder if, uh, Bruce, something came to your mind. We need to graft some kind of metric um, to look at how we are developing our leadership skills uh, in terms of how we're perceived and what we're doing. I think as well, I mean, we're not going to change this uh, culture in the company with just the four of us around this table. Um, I think it's going to be tremendously important to cascade this down. So, you know, we'll each take six people that report our direct reports and they'll take six people each and cascade this down to perhaps the top 150 people. The first meeting we should have is uh go back and uh, deal with the people who wrote those things about me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also, as you know, I'm like a bad penny, and I promise to come back in three months and then ask all of you, what have you done? What have you done? It's been a, a difficult, challenging, and uh, emotionally tiring uh, journey that we've been through uh, with you this week, but um, we're very much determined, I think all of us, uh, to change and uh, start afresh, and thank you for taking us on this journey. Hopefully we'll continue that good work, so we look forward very much to seeing you in the next three months. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, back to the office and back to normal on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. How did it go? How do you feel? I feel somewhat oh. sceptical, I think. I think it was good, but I'm not sure. We'll see. Jeff, yeah. how did it go? How do you feel? Uh, well, uh, relieved, big relief, big relief, and uh, surprisingly positive. Because I think you remember at the beginning, I was uh, I had a very negative attitude towards it, and uh, the whole process was quite good for me. Joe, how did it go? How do you feel? I feel pretty good actually. Um, hope springs eternal, and well, we'll see. But I mean, there's definitely food for thought. And, yeah, I feel a lot better now than I did when I came in. Bruce, how did it go? Well, I mean, it was uh, very powerful, very different from what we uh, were expecting, I think, and uh, draining, uh, tiring, um, and I really think that we've changed the way that uh, we're going to work together. I mean, I very powerful experience. I didn't know an awful lot of those things about my fellow workers, and I don't think they knew that much about me. And... Uh, what we shared through these last few days, I think it's really going to change that we work together for the future. Thank you for that.